Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. You can't run from the truth, whether it be sleeping in separate beds or living a few miles down the road. Today on our space, sooner or later the past comes back to haunt you. Up first, This cheater gives a whole new meaning to long-distance relationships. Wife of 12 years cheated and then moved out. My, 35 male, wife, 40 female, of 12 years, started an affair with a colleague less than a year after our child was born. I caught them chatting by pure accident, confronted her, and was blamed that it was my fault, since I didn't pay her any attention since the child came. It's not that I have not paid attention. I noticed she was emotional, stressed, and burdened by things around her and at work. So I stopped asking things from her, like being intimate or helping around the child or house. I shouldered it all so she could rest, since I thought that was what she needed. Knowing what I know now, she was probably looking for a way to break up and or spend more time with the affair partner. She said she would give us a chance and stopped talking with him. I believed her and about a year went until she said, no, I can't anymore. I knew she was still talking with the affair partner, found messages, etc. So she looked for an apartment and found one and moved out August last year. I helped her move, but she still spent a lot of time with me and our child until she decided in January of this year to move for real into her apartment. She said she needed to do this to find herself and to figure out what she wanted in life. I have read enough stories here to know what that means. Don't have any real proof, but I am very certain what she has been doing. I decided to make myself busy with other things, working out and attending work events, etc. to try to focus on myself. However, I missed our family regardless during all this time. I still do, but I would never admit that to her. I told my wife in the beginning, I will never come asking you for anything, and it all comes down to you if you want to commit to our family and solve this. But by the time that happens, there's no guarantee that I am interested in fixing it. Time goes by, and we sometimes on weekends do something together with our child. I get vibes that she is regretting and wants to fix things, but she never admits to it. But somehow I get the feeling it will be fine. Until last week when I again, by mistake, saw that she is chatting with the affair partner and declaring, I love you, to each other. That's when I decided enough already. I talked with her that evening and said, I won't put up with this anymore. You are married and have a boyfriend at the same time. Let's just sign the divorce papers and be over with it. After a lot of talk and crying from her side, she signed it. I asked her no communications unless it's regarding our child. It's been barely a week since we signed the papers, but she writes to me short sentences about our child now and then. I am devastated since I probably have built up the expectations we would reconcile, but here we are. I am sad and down for the most part. I try to occupy my mind to not think, but it's just so hard. I want my family, but I hate what she has become and done to us. Here's some advice from the community. Greyrock and 180 going forward. You are allowing Hopium to rule your life and that she would be back. Now you have clear closure that y'all would never be a healthy and happy couple again. Use this info to move forward in your life and begin the healing that you've put off for a year. You realize how despicable she is, right? It's been at least two years of cheating and lying to you. Don't be her friend. Co-parent only with very minimal contact and focus forward on your life. You need to start prioritizing your feelings and emotions. The OP replies, Yes, I felt empowered to drop the divorce papers on her and getting them signed. I felt in control for the first time since this all began. I started cleaning out my apartment from things that she had put thought into to decorate and put up new things, etc. It felt good, even if insignificant. I am doing my best to answer as little as possible to her messages, about our child only, of course, but it all hurts doing this to what has been for such a long time my best friend and support in life. Doing 180 I think I will be able to handle, but gray rocking will probably be a lot harder since I am not cold as a person, but I want to achieve it. The silence between us really hurts though. The OP has an update. Today is a week exactly since we signed the papers. I feel better, mostly thanks to you all for bolstering my resolve, than I did that day. I think of her a lot, but I do not contact her at all. She writes sometimes, but asks about our child. I usually wait some time before responding, and I only respond with the bare minimum, like, okay, or our child is fine. She tries to talk using our child as the topic, but I shut it down rather fast. I'm trying to not come off as unpolite or mean, just uninterested and busy. It's rough, but I feel like I am doing it fine. But my god, I miss talking with her. But I decided she will get nothing from me. She hasn't shown any regret to what has happened, and when I referred to a fair partner as her boyfriend, she didn't even flinch. I wish they crashed so bad, but since they have been on and off for soon to three years, I think they will stick together. But what does that matter, to be honest? Oh well. But I truly appreciate all the support I have been getting here. 
You make me feel so strong I could give the Hulk a good run for his money. Someone from the community chimes in. I have a very similar story to yours. 14 years married, she wanted to move out and find herself, etc. Except when I found out that she had an affair with a colleague, I didn't play the pick-me dance, which never works. Look where that got you. No offense. I also didn't help her move. Don't be her friend, mate. She emotionally abused you, put you at risk of STDs, destroyed your child's foundation in life, and clearly just kept you close to have both options. Her relationship with a fair partner won't last, but you can't take her back. Never be the second choice or plan B. Make sure you get 50-50 custody. It sucks that I'm still suffering also. We will get through this. Honestly, OP, I think your marriage was done a long time ago and you never actually grieved for it because she gave you some false hope. You really did just sort of enable that behavior though. You let her walk all over you and your child. Have some respect for yourself. You need to be strong for your child right now. Your child deserves someone who wants to be there, not someone who texts occasionally to check in and make it like they care. Update. First of all, I would like to thank everyone that read my previous post and gave me advice and support. It helped me really to cope with the current situation. I am truly grateful. So now it's been two weeks since she signed the divorce papers and we got the process started. Since then, she has actually done what I asked of her, to keep our communication to an absolute minimum. During her days, she writes when she has picked up our child and when our child has fallen asleep. Sometimes sends a picture of what they have been doing. I long for her messages, but as soon as I get them, I feel disgusted. I on purpose wait before I answer them to not give her any feeling that I missed to hear from her. Childish, perhaps. I answer with short replies and I try my best not to sound rude. I try to be kind but short. Replies that instantly kills any further conversation, if that makes sense. She has a week's vacation now and has a family friend over, so messages are down to one to two per day, since she doesn't have time for me, of course. We have been living separately since August last year, so we are used to, by now, to have shared custody. But since papers got signed, I feel more alone than ever. Coming home to an empty house after work sucks. I do what I need to, I prepare for the next day, I eat, and then I spend time here reading to try to shake the bad feelings away. I wrote in a previous reply that I found out that a fair partner finally divorced his wife and they are now registered on different addresses. Even though I know they have had an on and off thing going on for two and a half years at least, this made it feel even worse and most of all, made the situation feel real. I would probably be more okay if she ends up dating someone else, but her finally having her fair partner feels like such a kick under the belt. But all is not grim. Most of my days I feel great. I get support from my family and friends and I try to activate myself by doing things I have always wanted to try. But then evenings come and I feel like crap again. Someone from the community offers, she finally has her fair partner, another crappy person. Great, let them have each other. Any fairy tale ending the night seems to have will be a lie. You are rebuilding day by day and that takes courage. Keep posting and keep moving forward. Just like the comment said, let them have each other. Pay her no mind. She certainly doesn't care about you and hasn't cared while her tongue has been down someone else's throat. What do you think? Meanwhile, next up, Grandma took a secret to the grave with her. Would I be the a-hole if I exposed a 70-year-old family secret? I, 34 female, recently came to the realization after multiple ancestral genetic tests that my grandfather, deceased, was not the biological father of my dad, 69 male. He's been gone 20 plus years now, but Grandma, 85 female, is still alive and well. Dad's bio father is also deceased, but I have found a person I am 99% sure is his half-sister, 50s-ish, female, just 20 minutes away from us. There are at least two more siblings, and I think I found a third a few hours away. We're all very far from where they were born, where their families are from. Dad and Grandma have had a strained relationship for years. All of his siblings have. I think you should know the truth and have the chance to understand why my results came back with such a significant percentage of one particular ancestral region that we had no inclination of previously, as well as why he doesn't look like any of the rest of his siblings. He strongly resembles the newly assumed bio father. Mom, 61 female, has forbidden me from telling him, and he's just started to get back on speaking terms with my grandmother. With all the family tension, I know this information could stir up a lot of drama, but I think he has the right to know. I'm aware of the internal conflict it's going to cause when he finds out, but also what an amazing experience it could be to have that open up. Extra background info. I became vaguely aware around high school age of a sibling of mine having been adopted, but mom didn't admit it till I was in my 20s. She denied it to my younger sister, now 31 female, and older half-brother, now 45 male, from dad's first marriage, until I told her I was looking for him. When I thought I found him, now 38 male, several years later, she told me she knew where he was, always had, and he didn't want to be contacted. I respected that and dropped it. 
Six months later, he was standing in her kitchen, waiting to meet my children, and I. I struggled for almost 15 years with the knowledge I had a brother out there. He was raised by an incredible couple, who I am so thankful for, but I know she struggled a bit with a lack of knowledge for a time as well. She may be his wife, but mom really doesn't know what it's like to question who is out there or where she came from, or to be confused about so much of what she believed to be her history, and I think I should tell dad anyway. Would I be the a-hole? The community responds. First up, she really took that secret to the grave. <laughs> Second person responds, not the a-hole. Sorry, I think people should be given the truth. You aren't planning to make your dad do anything with this info, are you? I think it might be helpful to feel him out and try to get a sense of whether he would want this info or not. Maybe by bringing up your own situation and your feelings about it? And if he says something like, Yeah, I would never have wanted to know in that position. Then of course, drop it. But sometimes the only way to know is to tell. It's not your fault this secret exists or the DNA test came along to expose it. If he's always looked different, knows that unexpected ancestry results came up, your grandma has admitted to dating this other guy, and his sister's DNA results match? Guess what? He probably has guessed already. In that circumstance, it just seems mean to keep pretending like nothing is weird. Of course, tell him in private and let him be if he doesn't want to do anything with the info or needs time to process it. Don't assume you know how it will go based on your own experience, and try to be there for him if things are bad. And maybe try to bring your mom around first. I don't agree with her position, but it would suck if you have to deal with bad blood from her for a long time over this. Hmm, this is a tough one, but the comments make a great point. Maybe run it past your father hypothetically to see if he would be potentially interested in hearing the truth, but also try to get your mom on your side. Try to get her to see why it's important to tell him, or you could be in hot water with a lot of people. Update. It's been about two years since my original post that I got a couple messages asking for an update. So here it goes. Initially, everything was put on hold when COVID-19 tore its way through our homes. When new routines started falling into place, I made an attempt to ask grandma some direct questions with sensitivity to possible mistreatment in mind as suggested previously. She was adamant there was no malignancy in her home life and after forgetting probable bio grandfather for a while, she returned to her previous claim. They dated casually to pass the time, that's all. I asked again about previously assumed grandpa's deployment to Germany. She wouldn't give dates, but reiterated her insistence he was stateside and they were married by dad's conception. I'm still waiting on a response for that DOD VA record request. A few weeks passed and I'd talked more with likely half aunt. I set aside a time and date with grandma to speak candidly and privately, still over the phone as I worked with the public and couldn't risk her health by traveling there. She knew what it was about. The appointment was actually her idea. Then she freaking died that exact morning. Grandma was temporarily in a nursing home while she recovered from a UTI and my aunt was arranging an HHA. The joke now is she just said, you thought you had me, ha, <laughs> and made her exit. Her funeral came and went with lots of unrelated drama. Half-brother from dad and I decided to shelve the matter indefinitely while affairs were sorted and grieving processed. That lasted about a year before a notoriously chaotic cousin of ours went and did all of the DNA tests on the market. While he is an a-hole in his own right, he's also incredibly intelligent and has undoubtedly put this together by now. My brother and I didn't trust he'd keep the info to himself, especially post-funeral drama, and decided it'd be best to get ahead of it. I sat dad down, told him what I knew, what I believed, and info obtained from grandma before her passing, provided him with whatever I had by the way of documentation. He paced a bit, fiddled with knickknacks, made a couple, what, faces, and kind of shrugged it off. He said he wasn't sure he believed it or even cared. I made it clear he wasn't required to follow up in any way, but if he had questions, I'd help him navigate the data. If he decided to test to remove any doubt, I'd get him one and help him sort that. And his, probable, half-sister is open to speaking, sharing info, and maybe testing privately. That's it. He hasn't brought it up in six months or so since. Mom says he hasn't with her either, but in no way to truly know. The community responds with, There is a point in a man's life where the technicality doesn't matter anymore. Who we love and hold dear does. He is happy with his family, just as I would be. Blood doesn't make family. Our connections and who we love does. For most people, that's usually who shares their blood, but sometimes it isn't. So the update is, he loves his family regardless of any tests, and that's the best you can expect from a good man. Someone else replies, he truly may not care. In every way that mattered, the man who raised him was his father. Another person chimes in, he could genuinely not care. 
I found my dad's half-brother from his dead beat bio dad in one of those sites, and when I told him, all he did was laugh, and we haven't brought it back up since. Especially if all this drama is happening, he probably isn't particularly interested in reworking his position in the family. The next thought says, story time, my mom's ex-boyfriend, his dad, let's call him Frank. Frank found God in the bottom of a moonshine bottle sometime in the 1970s. He got sober and became a religious nutbag. Now obviously not all religious people are nutbags, but Frank was definitely a nutbag. He claimed he was without sin, and because of that, God had given him the power to heal people in Jesus' name, and more weirdly sends evil spirits with a coat hanger, and ward off said spirits with copper wire and fabric softener. Don't ask, I don't know. Then sometime in 2014, he dropped dead. No warning. Frank had been in excellent health, but had a heart attack so massive it snuffed him out before his head hit the floor. His neighbor was a paramedic and was on the spot within moments. But Frank was a systole, no electrical activity in the heart, the kind flatline where all the king's horses and all the king's men can't put you together again. And when the ambulance arrived, he was declared dead as a doornail. Turns out a few months before, the daughter of an old flame had reached out and asked if he was her dad. He had vehemently denied this, but his daughter knew it was a high chance of it. So she got the court to order a paternity test. Frank got a letter that essentially said, take the dang DNA test or you will go directly to jail. Do not pass go, do not collect $200. Frank knew the test would be positive and the anxiety of it becoming common knowledge that he who was chosen by God had one daughter born out of infidelity wedged in between his true born daughters was apparently too much to face. The results of the DNA test came in the mail two days after his death. I don't know what Frank was so worried about though. Most people considered him a village idiot anyway. His true-born children would just ignore him when he went on his ramblings and his wife was super graceful about it. She welcomed the woman into her home and the funeral and has treated her like family ever since. So while I wouldn't exactly say OP killed her grandma, I have personally seen DNA tests make people go so anxious they just snuff it. I suppose it's true, at a certain point it doesn't matter. I mean, the man who took care of him was his father, whether he was his biological father or not. And that's all that matters. What do you think? Would you have told your father? Why or why not? Thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. Until next time.